हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल मेडिसिन अब आज रोन टुडे वी टॉक अबाउट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द एक्यूट पेरिकार्डाइटिस ओके सो हाउ कैन वी जस्ट डू द डायग्नोसिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एक्यूट पेरिकार्डाइटिस सो इन दिस केसेस वी हैव टू नो द फोर नो मेन प्रिंसिपल्स ओवर हियर फॉर द डायग्नोस्टिक फीचर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एक्यूट पेरिकार्डाइटिस सो लेट्स राइट इट ओवर हियर वी गेट इन दिस केसेस द फोर प्रिंसिपल डायग्नोस्टिक फीचर्स ओके डायग्नोस्टिक फीचर्स Third year, or up. Third, we'll get within the ECG changes. We'll get the changes within the ECG. We'll talk about all these things in detail in New Jersey. Okay. We we'll get the ECG changes, and we'll also get in terms of you know pericardial effusion, pericardial effusion. Now see among these four. Features. So if we get the combination of any two, if we get the combination of any two, then we can just do the diagnosis for the acute pericarditis. So the four major principles are the chest pain, the pericardial rub, the ECG changes, and the pericardial effusions. So if you get any two combination of these four, then that will be regarded as what? That will be diagnosed as the pericardial pericardial what acute pericarditis. Okay. So first we'll talk about in terms of the chest pain. Now see, we just see the development of the chest pain in the in acute myocardial infarctions as well as in the what acute myocarditis. Sorry, acute what pericarditis. Now, how can we just do the differentiation in between the acute pericarditis and the acute what am I? Acute myocardial infarction. That's the most main important thing to discuss over here. Now, if I say in terms of the chest pain, for example, I'm writing it over here. Then in terms of acute pericarditis, acute pericarditis and Acute myocardial infarctions. How can I just do the differentiation in terms of the chest pain? Now see, when you are talking in terms of the acute pericarditis, here we will get the central chest pain. We we'll get the central chest pain. In the same way, here we also get the what the central chest pain. Central chest pain. Oh, how can we just do the differentiation? In this case, we will get the types of the nature of the pain. That will be what? That will be stabbing, or you can say, let's write it over here. We will get in this case is the type of the or the nature of the pain that will be served, or you can say stabbing like pain over here. But in this case, we will get the pain that is the diffuse or dull pain. Okay, diffuse or dull pain. And in these cases, the patients that they will think in just the, you know the whenever they will ask the patients they will think in this way they will say in this way they are saying you know they are they just feel the void on the chest. So in these cases the the Indian you know, patients they will feel the void that is being applied on the chest, void on chest. Or in these cases we will get what the constrictive pain. In these cases we will get the constrictions, the pain, nature of the pain that will be diffuse dull in in terms of what we can say also the constrictive pain or then we can say the constrictions. Or the individual, they can say that they are feeling that you know void on the chest. Now, whatever thing the these are the normal things. We get also the central chest pain over here. We will also get, but this is the what different differentiation in terms of the nature of the pain. Now, in these cases, whenever we will ask the you know acute pericarditis patients, in these cases, whenever the individual they will lie down at that time, the pain that will get increased. So, on lying down. See in these cases, let's write it over here on lying down. The pain that will increase, but on sitting condition, on sitting or if you ask the patient, if you ask the patient to blend forward, if you ask the patient to blend, to bend forward. At that time, if the patient should be see bending on bending forward, bending forward. In these cases, the pain. That will be decreased. Okay, but in these cases, that's why it is known as also what the postural pain. Postural pain on the changes in the changes in the positions, we can see the differences in the pain. 
for example, on the lying down conditions, we will get the pain that will be increased. But whenever the individual of acute pericarditis on the sitting conditions or on the whenever you ask the patients to bend forward at the time, we will see the pain that will get decreased. But in this, in the what acute AMI or we can say the acute myocardial infections, in these cases, there will be no change in the pain. Whether the you know, patient is changing the positions, but still the pain will be same. So we can see in these cases that is not postural pain. So we can write it over here. No question. Postural pain. The third thing, as we know that acute myocardial infections, whenever an individual they will develop, for example, the transmural, you know, the what we can say the full. You know, all full all of the myocardium that is getting inflamed or it gets infected. At that time, we see the pain that can radiate. So we can see the radiations of the pain in terms of the acute myocardial infections. For example, we can see over here that the, the pain that can radiate, a pain that can radiate, for example, to the neck, to the jaw, or sometimes over within the epigastric region also. But in these cases also we will get the what the in terms of the acute pericarditis we will also get what we will also get the radiations of the pain but how in the acute pericarditis we will also get the radiations of the pain in these regions as well in the neck jaw in the epigastric but how the, the pain of the radiation we can see in terms of the radiations of the pain in terms of the acute pericarditis is different from the acute MI pain over here see in these cases we will get the pain radiations we will also get but how will you differentiate this type of the pain radiations will get also in terms of the acute pericarditis no problem okay there is no doubt but in these cases we will get the pain radiations that will be where within the you know trapezial ridge within the what within the trapezial ridge over here along with that we will get also the pain that will be radiated to the lower border lower angle of the sternum sorry lower border of the scapula so in these cases we will get the pain radiations where we will get along with the, the trapezial ridge get the pain that will be radiated to the trapezial ridge along with that will get also the radiations of the pain wave in the lower angle of the scapula lower angle of scapula okay so in terms of the pain we can differentiate it you can just do the differentiation we will get the central chest pain here will also get the central chest pain but the nature of the pain here will get the sharp or stabbing type pain here will get the diffuse or dull pain okay and the patients or the individual you can see over here they will feel the weight they, you know they are they will feel that you know some someone is sitting on the chest and that's why we can say that they will feel the weight on the chest and this type of the pain the constrictive pain in nature and as i said on the line this is the postural pain over here on lying down the pain that will increase on the sitting or you can say if you have the patients to bend forward at the time the pain that will that will be less over here and in these cases there will be no changes in the pain as far as the position is changed but and the next thing, we'll, in this case, we will get the radiations of the pain. In the word, for example, we can get the radiation of the pain in the neck, jaw, in the epigastric regions. Here we will also get the pain radiation in these regions. Along with that, we will also get the pain, pain radiations within the trapezial ridge, you know, trapezius muscles over here. And we will get also what? The lower angle of the scapula. Here we will get what do we know? Here we, what do we know in this case is that the phrenic nerve. Okay, that will be disturbed over here and that will just give us, you know, sensation of the pain. Now, we will talk about the other features. As I said in the first week, we will talk about what the chest pain, then we will talk about the pericardial graph, then we will talk about the other thing. Now, try to understand, as I said you over here, that in these cases, whenever you are talking this way, that in terms of the acute pericarditis, so from the acute pericarditis, if you see the inflammations or the chemical mediators that can reach from the pericardium to the pleural regions, so as I said, we can also see over here, in these cases, we can also get the plural pain. Plural pain. That you can see the plural pain. Now we'll see the plural pain that will be increased during inspiration. So if you ask the patients to take the deep inspirations, so if you ask the patient for deep inspirations, at that time we'll see the plural pain that will be increased. And this plural pain that is what acute pericarditis induced plural pain. So in these cases, whenever the patients they will take the deep inspirations at that time. The pain that will the plural pain that will be increased along with that whenever the individual will just cough at that time also the pain that will be increased over here but in these cases we will not get in these cases we will not get what the plural pain now how can you just do the difference this is pain for the acute pericarditis okay now see if you see in terms in this way that for example the pain that is getting developed for the acute pericarditis and we are getting the pain that is developed for 
plural panel if you say the plural pen that is getting developed isolated we are getting over isolated plural pen and in cases we are getting isolated f pen for the what acute pericarditis now see how can we just do the differentiation okay now see if you ask the patients to hold the breathing on holding breathing on holding the breathing the plural pain in this cases the pain that will disappear the pain that will disappear but what i would in this cases if you ask the patients to hold the breathing but in terms of the acute pericarditis will get the pain continue so now on holding on holding breathing on holding breathing the pain that will continue so you get the pain that will continue there will be no relief in terms of the pain from here okay so these are the features as far as the pain is concerned we can get this type of the thing okay now we'll talk about that how can we just uh, just do the you know clinical manifestations in terms of the different kinds of the test you know in terms of the acute pericarditis and the acute mi now see as we know that in terms of the acute mi we will get what whenever we we'll get the infections within the myocardium where well, as we know that in this cases we will get the value the value for what the troponin t and the what ck mb that will be increased so if i say over here in terms of the acute mi the value for the troponin t whenever the cells that will go under necrosis process at the time we will get the troponin t the value for the troponin t and the mb creatinine kinase you know this value that will be increased we can see also this type of the thing let's draw, draw a diagram for example, I'm just taking in this way. Okay, let's draw it. Okay. Now let's draw the pericardium also over here. We're getting the pericardial inflammations over here. Okay. Sometimes we can see. That the, you know within the within the inflammatory process, you know some types of the chemical mediators, chemical inflammatory mediators, they can reach from here to the what? From here, from the visceral layers of the pericardium to the myocardium. That means the outermost layer of the myocardium that is known as epicardium. So we can get the inflammations within the epi myocardium, epi myocardium. And why we'll see because these chemical mediators, the inflammatory chemical mediators from the from the what pericardium they can reach up to here and they can cause the what inflammations over here and whenever we will get also the inflammations over here there are chances for the development of the what infections now in these cases we can say that this you know this what myocardial infections we are getting over here we can say the myocarditis or inflammation of the myocardium that is what the pericarditis induced myocarditis in this case we will get what the pericarditis induced myocarditis but whenever we will get Let's uh, draw another diagram. Then I think, okay, let's draw it over here. What type of thing will we get? Now, in these cases, we are getting what? The pericarditis in induced myocarditis. So, you can say the pericarditis induced myocardial infections. Okay. Now, another case, I am just drawing it over here. Okay. just replace for my draw, drawing now in this case I see for example it's the again I'm just drawing the myocardial layers over here is the myocardium and is the pericardium now see is the pericardium I'm getting over here okay now see if we get the development of the True myocardial infections, for example, we are getting a development of the true myocardial infections over here. How can we just do the differentiations? Here we are getting the true myocardial infections. True myocardial infections. And in these cases, we are getting what? In these cases, we are getting the myocardial infections, or you can say the myocarditis. You can say the pericarditis induced. Pericarditis induced. Myocarditis, or you can say myocardial infarctions. Now, in this case, see, as I said to you over here, in this case, the troponin T, the value for the troponin T 
and we will along with that we will also get the value for the CKMB that will be elevated but in this cases that will be elevated severe we will get the severe elevations of the word troponin T and the CKMB but in this cases in terms of the pericarditis induced myocardial infarctions here we will get also the elevations of the you know value for uh, the troponin T along with that CKMB but in this cases the value that will increase from mild to moderate so we will increase mild to moderate value of troponin T and CKMB so in this cases we can say the value for the troponin T and the CKMB that will increase but mild to moderate but in the true AMI what is the true myocardial infections here we will get the value that will increase severe we will get the severe increase value in terms of the troponin T and the CKMB creatinine kinase MB okay now we can just do the differentiation as far as the Test is concerned in terms of the troponin T and the CKM. Now, the other, what are the other criteria by which we can just do the differentiation in terms of the acute EMI and the acute pericarditis? Let's talk about those things. Now, see, as far as the ECG is concerned, whatever the thing we will get over here. Okay. See, now, as far as the ECG, ECG is concerned, whatever the thing we will get over here, let's uh, talk about those things. I am writing it over here the acute pericarditis and I am writing it over here acute MI okay in the true acute MI we will get what we as we know that we will get the ST segment elevation over here we will get the ST segment elevation the acute pericarditis will also get the ST segment elevations try to understand Whenever we are getting our diffuse pericarditis, you know, we are getting the diffuse pericarditis over here. As a result, we will see these chemical mediators or the chemical, you know, the components, inflammatory components, they will go from here and they will cause the, they will cause the what? In these cases, they will cause the myocardial infarction or myocarditis over here. So, whenever we get the diffuse in these cases, in these cases, we will also get, you know, we are getting the myocardial infarctions for what? We can say the pericarditis induced myocardial infarctions. And for that reason, as we are getting the development of the myocardial infarctions, it may be mild to moderate, but we are getting at least, right? So here we will also get the ST segment elevation. Here we will also get the ST segment elevations. Oh, wow. But how can we just do the differentiations over here? Now, we can say that in terms of the true MI or the acute MI over here, we will get the ST segment elevation where in the leads that face the, the leads that facing the for example, I am developing the anterior all of the myocardial infarctions. I am writing it over here. For example, I am just developing the anterior all myocardial infarctions. So in these cases, we will get the elevations of the ST segment only the anterior leads. So in these cases, we will get the ST segment elevation within the anterior lead, anterior lead over here. For example, if I say that I'm just you know for example any any individual who is developing the myocardial infarctions in the lateral or so if we see the the you know elevations sorry we can see if we say that any individual who is developing the lateral all lateral all myocardial infarctions at that time we'll also get the ST segment elevation okay that to, that face the lateral all that means if we see the development of the lateral all myocardial infarction in these cases, the leads that are that are present laterally, in those leads we will see the say you know ST segment elevation. Now, in these cases, for example, we can get the ST segment elevation in terms of V5, V6, you know V2. In these cases, we can get the ST segment elevation. But in these cases, try to understand whenever I am saying that we are getting the diffuse pericarditis over here, so along with for that region we will get. Then, you know, the, for that reason, we will get the what you know the different kinds of the chemical mediators or the inflammatory mediators from the pericardium they will to the myocardium and they will problem diffusely. As a result, we will see that ST segment elevations that will be seen from all leads. So, in this case, we will get the ST segment elevation that will be found in almost, almost all leads. All leads, okay, but the leads that that is facing for example we are getting diffusely over here along with this myocardium but for example the leads 
that is facing towards the heart cavity. For example, in this, we can say that AVR or you can say the VI. In this cases, you cannot see the ST segment elevations found in almost all leads except except what the AVR and VR. AVR and VR. In these cases, we cannot see the ST segment elevation in terms of the AVR and VR because they are facing directly towards the heart cavity over here. And as we are getting the diffuse you know, pericarditis over here, so as a result, we will get the diffuse myocardial infarction, or you can say the diffuse myocarditis. As a result, we will see from all directions using all leads, we will get towards the ST segment elevations except the AVR and VI. AVR and VI, okay? So it's clear for you. Now, we'll talk about that sometimes we can get the acute pericarditis that is painful and painless okay so whatever the pericarditis that will be painful and whatever the pericarditis that will be painless for example if i write it over here in terms of the infective pericarditis infective pericarditis most commonly for the viral pericarditis in this case we will get the viral variants along with that if we get the immunological if we say that for the immunological dysfunction if we get the development of the pericarditis for example for the development of the SLE you can get the also the I have already mentioned all these things in the previous videos that we can get the development of the pericarditis in these cases we will also get the that will be the, the painful here will be the severe pain painful pericarditis and there are also certain cases where we will get the painless there may be in some other cases we will get the pain that may be present over there or the pain that may be absent over there okay for example as I also described you before that in terms of if we get the neoplastic infiltrations of the cell neoplastic infiltration of the cells and that will cause you know that acute pericarditis or you can say over here for example the, the we are getting the pericarditis for the tuberculosis in these cases for example here the pain that may be present or the pain that may be absent so as far as the pain for pain you know the pain sensation is concerned we can get the painful pericarditis we can get also the painless pericarditis so in terms of the infective pericarditis and the immunological disorders where we will get in terms of acid as i said before also there we can get the painful pericarditis and for example if we get the neoplastic infiltrations that will cause the acute pericarditis or you can say that for the development of the tuberculosis if you see the development of the pericarditis in those cases we will get the painless pericarditis okay or here the pain may be present or may be absent now we'll talk about now up to this much i have described only one word the heart care organs of the chest pain okay in terms of the chest pain now we'll talk about in terms of the pericardial rub what is pericardial rub okay for that thing i need to erase some portions from here guys okay let's yes Now, when you are talking in terms of the pericardial rub, what type of the thing will get over here? Pericardial rub. Now, see, normally what do you do? In between the two layers of the pericardium, you get this little amount of the fluid from 15 to 50 ml that will reduce the friction. So, whenever we are getting the ventricular contractions, so the atrial contractions. At the time, as the pericardium that is covering the atrium as well as the ventricle, at the time we will see the two layers of the ventricle they will glide on each other. At the time, if the fluid is present over there, that will reduce the frictions over here. Now, for whatever the reasons, if we get the inflammation within the pericardium, see the two layers of the pericardium, the two layers of the pericardium will get what inflamed, and within this layer, in between the two layers, we will get the exuded fluids. Okay, so we will get the two inflamed, no, try to understand from here, we will get the two inflamed pericardial layers. They will glide against each other one exudate. So try to understand from here. If we write it over here, that uh, that uh, two inflamed pericardial layer, pericardial layer, they will glide on each other on each other glide on. Each other and in between them we will get the water exudate in between them we will get the exudate and whenever they will glide each other we'll, we can hear on scratching sound we can hear on top of the scratching sound whenever try to understand whenever these two inflamed layers then glide on each other this is also inflamed 
This is also in film. Whenever they will glide on each other, definitely they will produce on top of the scratching sound. Okay, so we will get the production of on top of scratching, scratching sound. And this scratching sound that is known as pericardial drop. Now, when we can hear the best scratching sound over here, see if we say that if we ask the patients to bend forward and well, let me write it over than I'm explaining at the end of expiration, at end of expiration, okay, and at end of expirations, along with that, we have to also make sure that the patient that is the, the patient is bending forward. Whenever the patient that will bend forward, the patient that the patient will bend forward, along with that, if you see the end of the expirations at that time, you know, the lung that will that will be nearer to the chest, and at that time, we can hear the best scratching sound. So, it will be at the end of expirations, and the patients they will bend forward. Is the bending forward? So if we get that at the end of expirations and the body of the individual they will bend forward at that time we can hear the stretching sound and where in which positions the stretching sound that will be best heard so the stretching out the stretching sound or you can say for the development of the pericardial drop we will be getting the stretching sound and this stretching sound that will be best heard where in terms of left lower sternal border so if you write it over here the stretching sound that will be best heard in terms of the left lower sternal border so if you write the best heart in the left okay lower sternal border sternal border okay and we have definite whenever we are talking in terms of the sketching sound definitely is the loud sound we will get over here and just to you just to hear this sound we have to use the diaphragm part of the stethoscope okay? we have to use the diaphragm part of the stethoscope Okay, so let's write it over here. Just to hear the scratching sound, we have to use the diaphragm part of the stethoscope because the you know the bell part of the you know the bell part of the stethoscope that is responsible for hearing the soft sound. But here we are getting the loud sound. From the term, it's quite easy to understand. Whenever we are getting the using the term scratching sound, definitely that will be the louder sound. And for that thing, we have to use the diaphragm part of the stethoscope. So I am repeating once again that whenever we are developing the pericardial drop, we will get the productions of the scratching sound and the scratching sound that will be best heard where at the end of expirations and we should see the patients to bend forward and where in the position see, as far as the position is concerned that will be best heard in terms of the left lower external border okay now as far as the you know the scratching sound is concerned we will get the three components for the scratching sound okay you can get you can hear the scratching sound and the arterial contractions in terms of the ventricular contractions in terms of the ventricular relaxations so it is triphasic or it, sometimes it can be the monophasic sometimes it can be the what biphasic so if we see in terms of the three or the triphasic scratching sound or the pericardial drop we will get well in terms of the arterial contractions in terms of the ventricular contractions in terms of what in terms of also ventricular relaxation and sometimes we will see the pericardial drop or the scratching sound that is absent that will disappear, that will come and that will go instantly. Try to understand, sometimes you can get a scratching sound, sometimes not always, sometimes, okay, absent. Not absent, it uh, comes and goes rapidly. So in these cases, to confirm the pericarditis, we have to do the auscultations again and again. In these cases, whenever we are getting the disappearing of the Whenever we are getting the disappearing of the scratching sounds or you can see the pericardial drop, at that time we have to do auscultations again and again just to confirm the just to confirm the hearing the scratching sounds over here. Okay. Now we will talk about the what type of the ECG findings we will get in this case. As far as the ECG is concerned, what type of the thing we will get in this case. Okay. So first I did talk about the chest pain, then I did talk about the pericardial drop. I will talk about what type of the electro, you know, epical changes we will get in these cases. Now, as I said you before, also that in terms of the 
For example, the acute MI. In both cases, I have already explained we will get that. We will get the ST segment elevation. In acute MI, for example, if we get the transmural thickening or we can say the thickened MI wall, the microdial wall over here. If we get the thickened microdial wall and the microdial wall that will face to some leads, that the microdial wall that will face towards some leads and exactly within those leads, particularly within those leads facing towards the microdial wall within this load in, in fact in my cardinal or in this in those leads will get only the st segment elevations but whenever we get in terms of the acute pericarditis as i said that uh, you know whenever the acute, we are getting the acute pericarditis we'll get the development of the acute or you can say the infections or the inflammation within the microdium diffusely we'll get the diffuse microdial inflammations or the microdial infection as a result we'll get the st segment elevations that will be seen from the all side of the leads because it is the diffuse except the avr and v1 except the avr and I have already said in terms of the VI, AVR and VI, okay. Now as far as the ECG is concerned, what type of the thing we will get? Let's uh, draw the ECG. Here we will also get the ST segment elevation. Here we will also get the ST segment elevation. First I am drawing the for the acute pericarditis. So here we will get, okay, let's draw the different color. Okay. The pure, where is complex? Okay, let's uh, draw the different things over here. Yes. We'll get the pure complex. Okay. Okay. Now see, in this case, we are getting that the ST segment elevation. Definitely, we are getting the ST segment elevation. In the same way, we will also get the ST segment elevation. So, in this case, is okay. Let's try to draw in terms of the acute MI. I'll explain to already. I'll explain all these things. Okay, let's draw with the black color only. Pure, then we're getting the QS complex. Here we'll get the ST segment elevation in this way. Okay. Now try to understand from here. See. Here we are getting the ST segment elevation. Try to understand from here. Here we are getting the ST segment elevation in terms of what? Acute pericarditis. Here we are also getting the ST segment elevation in terms of the acute myocardial infarction. But see, as far as the ECG is concerned over here, see, in this case, see the ST segment elevations, that is what? We are getting the concave that is moving forward. Okay, we are getting the concave shape that's upward. Okay, let's use this color. The different in this case, as it is concerned, see, in this is that is moving upward. Okay, we will get the upward, and in this case, we will get what the point that will or the concave we can get towards the downward. So, let's uh, repeat once again, it's clearly see in this case, see, in terms of the acute pericardial. Segment elevations in terms of the acute myocardial infections will also get the ST segment elevations, but in these cases, we'll get the concave part that will face upward. We'll get the concave upward, in these cases, we'll get the concave downward. Okay, so let's write it over here in terms of the ST segment elevations. We'll get the concave shape, the shape of these things will get the shape of the ST segment elevations will get the concave upward, and in these cases, we'll get the concave downward, right? Is the concave downward now? Let's repeat once again. In terms of the acute pericarditis, we will get the ST segment elevations, but this ST segment elevations will get the shape of the ST segment elevations will get the ST what? Concave upward. In this case, this will get concave downward. Okay, it's clear. So these are the things as far as the ECG is concerned over here. We will get in terms of the acute pericarditis, the ST segment elevations that will be concave upward. 
in terms of the acute myocardial infarction that will be concave downward okay hope it's clear i have already explained in terms of the you know pericardial valve this is the findings in terms of the heart you know the chest pain all these things is clear now one thing is left uh, that is our pericardial effusion now the pericardial effusions i'll just add along with the treatment okay and the management of the acute pericarditis at that time i'll just uh, add the you know, skipping point that is what in terms of the pericardial effusion then i think the copy that will be completed okay if you don't get any point related to the videos, please let me know in the comment sections. And if you think this video is helpful for you as far as the cardiology is concerned over here, so please do like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video soon.